This is lesson 13 in our Calculus 1 series, Implicit Differentiation. So in the past few lessons, we've been talking about the slope of a curve and the slope of the tangent line to the curve at a particular point, but we've only been considering the case when y is a function of x, when the equation between x and y can be explicitly solved for y. But what about a curve like y minus x equals sine of xy? We might be interested in finding the slope of this curve at a particular point. But notice we can't solve this equation for y. And by looking at the graph we can say y is certainly not a function of x. So to find its slope at any point we want to use implicit differentiation. And this is an application of the chain rule. What we do is we take the derivative with respect to x of both sides of the equation. So we're starting with y minus x equals sine of xy and we take the derivative with respect to x of both sides of the equation. So here we're taking the derivative with respect to x of y minus the derivative with respect to x of x. And on the right hand side we use the chain rule and we're going to have cosine of xy multiplied by the derivative with respect to x of xy. The derivative of y with respect to x is just dy dx. Here, the derivative of x with respect to x is just 1. Here we copy down the cosine xy, and now we need the derivative of this product, x times y. So we use the product rule here. And so we have the derivative of the first times the second plus first times derivative of the second. The derivative with respect to x of x is just 1. The derivative with respect to x of y is dy dx. So now we're here. But remember what our goal is. Our goal is to find dy dx. We want an expression for dy dx because that will tell us the slope of that curve at any given point. So we need to solve for dy dx. So we need to collect our dy dx terms on one side of the equation and then factor it out and simplify. So we first need to distribute here in order to be able to move this dy dx over and collect it with this one. So this is going to be y cosine xy plus x dy dx cosine xy. We're distributing here. Now let's bring all of our dy dx terms to one side and the constant to the other side. So I'm going to add one to each side here. And I'm going to subtract x dy dx cosine xy from each side. So now I have dy dx minus x dy dx cosine xy is equal to y cosine xy plus 1. And again, we're trying to solve for dy dx, so we're going to factor that out here, and then divide both sides by the remaining factor. So now we have an expression for dy dx. And notice that it has both x's and y's in it, and that's perfectly OK. If we couldn't take the original equation and solve for y, we certainly don't expect to be able to eliminate y from the derivative equation. So, for example, we know this curve goes through the origin, since 0 minus 0 is equal to sine of 0. Right, 0 minus 0 is equal to sine of 0. We could also see that from the graph that goes through the origin. So, the slope at the origin, we're going to plug here x and y equaling 0. And that slope is going to be equal to 1. So that's how we use implicit differentiation to find the slope of a curve when the equation for that curve cannot explicitly be solved for y. Let's take a look at another. We want to find dy dx for y to the fifth plus x squared y to the third is equal to 1 plus x to the fourth y. So we're going to take the derivative of both sides with respect to x. So here that's derivative of y to the fifth plus derivative of x squared y to the third. And here that's derivative of 1 plus derivative of x to the fourth y. Let's take a look at what's happening here. Derivative with respect to x of y to the fifth. Remember that y depends on x, so this is a chain rule going on here. So we take the 5 down and we have 5y to the 4th. Then we have to take the derivative of the inside function with respect to x. So we have to multiply by dy dx. And that's going to happen every time you take the derivative of a y term. 
Here we have the derivative of x squared times y to the third. Well, that's going to be a product rule. So we have derivative of x squared multiplied by y to the third plus x squared times the derivative of y to the third. Here we have the derivative of 1 is 0, and here's another product rule. Derivative of x squared is 2x. Derivative of y to the third is 3y squared dy dx. Derivative of x to the fourth is 4x to the third. And then derivative of y is dy dx. Now remember that our goal is to solve for dy dx, so we want to collect all the dy dx terms on one side and bring everything else to the other side. So here we have 5y to the fourth dy dx plus 3x squared y squared dy dx. Subtract this over, this is negative x to the fourth dy dx. On the other side we have 4x to the third y, subtract this over, minus 2xy to the third. We factor out our dy dx and then divide both sides by the remaining factor. And so we're here. This is our expression for dy dx. And by looking at the original equation, we can see that the point 0, 1 fits on this equation. And so we can say that the slope at 0, 1 is equal to dy dx at 0, 1. So here we're plugging x equals 0, y equals 1 and that slope is equal to zero. Let's take a look at another. Find the points on the curve where the tangent line is horizontal. So when they talk about a tangent line being horizontal, they're talking about dy dx being equal to zero. So we need to find dy dx here and then set it equal to zero. So we're taking the derivative with respect to x of both sides. So derivative with respect to x of x squared is 2x. Here we're going to have to use the product rule. Here we have 2y dy dx, and here our derivative is 0, also a 0 on the right side. Using the product rule, we're here. We have derivative of x multiplied by y plus x times derivative of y. So that's going to be a 1 times y plus x dy dx. And notice that's all inside parentheses with a negative on the outside because we had a negative xy here. So it's important to recognize that this negative applies to the entire result of the derivative here. So all of that goes in parentheses and then we'll distribute that negative sign. So now we're here and we want to collect our dy dx's to one side and bring everything else to the other side. Factor our dy dx and divide by the remaining factor. So now we have dy dx is equal to 2x minus y over x minus 2y. And we need this to be equal to zero so that we can find the points where we have horizontal tangent lines. So if we set the numerator equal to 0, that tells us that 2x minus y is equal to 0, or that y is equal to 2x. Okay, but that doesn't specify any points for us. So we're finding out here that the derivative is equal to 0 when y is equal to 2x. Well, remember that these points also fit the original equation. So what happens when we sub in 2x for y in the original equation? Then we're left with 3x squared minus 1 is equal to 0. And so x squared is equal to 1 third, and x is equal to positive or negative radical 1 third, or positive negative 1 over radical 3. So these are the x coordinates where this graph has horizontal tangent line. And what are the corresponding y coordinates? Well, we said y is equal to 2x, so the corresponding y coordinates are two times the x-coordinates. So this is the graph that goes with this equation. And so what we found are the points here and here where the graph has a horizontal tangent line. Let's take a look at another. 
find dy dx for tan of x over y equals x plus y. So again, we're going to start by taking the derivative with respect to x of both sides of the equation. Here we have a chain rule. The derivative of tan of something is going to be secant squared of that something multiplied by the derivative of the inside function. On the right hand side we have a 1 plus dy dx. So here we have secant squared of x over y multiplied by the derivative of x over y. Here we have to use the quotient rule. Bottom times derivative of the top minus top times derivative of the bottom over bottom squared. Now our goal is to solve for dy dx. So remember what we're going to have to do is distribute here and be able to get this dy dx collected with the other one on the other side of the equal sign. But the first thing I notice is that I've got a fraction here, so I'm just going to multiply everything by y squared to get rid of that fraction. So now I'm here. And now I want to distribute the secant square x over y to both of these terms so that I can get this dy dx term over to the other side. So I add the dy dx term over to the other side and I subtract this y square over to that side and so we're here. We factor out our dy dx and divide by the remaining factor. And so now we're here. And that is our dy dx. And so implicit differentiation always works the same way. You start with the equation that you're given and you take the derivative with respect to x on both sides. The tricky part is that you've got to remember to use your product rule, your quotient rule, your chain rule. And remember that every time you take the derivative of a y term, you have to multiply in by dy dx. Because remember, y depends on x and that's really a chain rule problem. And as with every other lesson in calculus, to master this, you'll really need to do a lot of practice. And we'll conclude our lesson on implicit differentiation here.